What's up guys, it's Tom here and Happy New Year to all of you guys. Finally 2020 is over, 2021 is here. Let me know if you have any New Year's resolutions. I really hope that Liverpool will win either the Premier League or the Champions League in this uh, upcoming year. And I really hope that you guys will have a much better year than 2020. I know that last year was very hard for many of you guys and we had all challenges to face. But I'm really grateful that I'm still here making videos for you guys guys so if you are excited for the new year with a breath, lot of great exciting content coming your way leave a like and subscribe if you are new to my channel and I have some incredibly exciting news Liverpool announced the two new signings recently and the latest one is a centre-back finally Liverpool signed the centre-back because the Athletic is reporting that Liverpool have completed the signing of a Celta Vigo centre-back Stefan Bajcet uh, and uh, Man United were, were also interested in this player and Liverpool have been scouting him since 2019 so in this video you will get to know all you need to know about this new player and also we have another another transfer announcement to make for you guys so Liverpool completed two new players two, two new signings recently which I'm super happy about and I think more to come in the January transfer window so Liverpool have completed the move also for Birmingham City left back Callum Scanlon who is just 15 years old and he joined from the championship club for a fee in the region of 400,000 pounds so Liverpool have been working around the club clock to get a deal over the line for by Chetic, the centre-back from Celta Vigo in what has been a short period of time they basically had to push through this deal before the Brexit deal came uh, in uh, like around Christmas because Bajcetic is a central defender who is still a teenager he is just 16 years old and Liverpool had to complete this signing before the Brexit deal went into effect because after the Brexit deal went into effect Liverpool can't sign players from the EU who are younger than 18 years old and Liverpool uh, scouts have been very impressed with Bajcetic they have been scouting him since 2000 19 Liverpool have tracked him very closely it is still early on in his development but the fact that Liverpool were so keen on getting this particular deal over the line speaks volumes for the players potential Bajcetic and Scanlon the left back signed from Birmingham also impressed the club with their character off the pitch which makes Liverpool believe they will easily integrate into the Liverpool Academy life Liverpool of course want both players to settle and de before de they decide which academy sides uh, they will join and Liverpool had to work very very hard uh, to pip Manchester United for his signature they had to convince not just the young defender but he also had to they also had to convince his family his agent and Celta Vigo that this was the right move for uh, Barcetic who is now a very exciting Liverpool youth academy player key to this was the fact that academy director Alex Inglethorpe and also the assistant academy director Nick Marshall and and the under 23s coach Barry Lutas were all involved in uh, the discussions between Liverpool and Bajcetic, his agent, his family and so on and so forth. The transfer fee is not a very very high transfer fee, it's just £250,000 which is like uh, a fraction of the transfer fee that Liverpool no normally pay but this is very very ex exciting news uh, Liverpool also completed the sky signing of Callum Scanlon who is an England under 15 international and he cost half a million pounds and Callum Scanlon posted this to his Instagram uh, happy to sign with Liverpool FC a big thank you to Birmingham City FC and everyone who has helped me progress to this point and as of today I start a new chapter in my life in my career the hard work continues let's go so that's the kind of upbeat um, attitude that we want to see of course uh, but can you imagine just 15 years old and sign for Liverpool that must have been an absolute dream for Scanlon as well and I think the fact that we beat Manchester United to the signature of Bajcetic is a huge huge uh, statement and I think it, it bodes well for the future that Liverpool are still a lot more attractive even for young players than Manchester United and it's testament to the fact that Jurgen Klopp are giving Jurgen Klopp is giving the young players 
playing opportunities, playing time. Yes, because of injuries, but still, if a young player can decide between Liverpool and another club, surely it must play on their mind that they have a direct route route to the first team. They can play in a Liverpool team in the, in the next two or three years and I think that must be very very hugely exciting for Bajcetic and let me know what do you think about this a very very exciting uh, signing and there are uh, huge rumors about the future of Divo Corrigi and Jorginho Vinadum. but according to Liverpool Echo Liverpool don't have a reason to believe that any player will be leaving Anfield this winter no player has expressed uh, expressed their desire to leave Liverpool right now. Origi has been recently linked with a move to Atletico Madrid after they released Diego Costa under very strange circumstances and Manchester City have sensationally been tipped to move for Vinadum in the next six months which I haven't heard before and I, I, I really hope that Vinadum doesn't go to Man City because that would tarnish his legacy at Liverpool which right now is very very strong. I consider Vinadum to be one of the legends at Liverpool who contributed massively to Liverpool winning the Premier League and the Champions League in the last two years. So Divo Corrigi is on the shortlist for Atletico Madrid but I'm not sure if uh, they will end up signing him but I think uh, he would be a good transfer for Atletico who who I think uh, will win the La Liga and I think they will sign a striker replacement for Diego Costa. Yes, they have Luis Suarez, yes, they have Joe Felix, but I think they need another another body, another striker in there. And Michael Owen said that Sadio Mane, I, he says he should have gone down when Darlow pulled his leg and held money back and I think it was a stonewall penalty replays showed that if Darlow doesn't impede money doesn't hold his leg in like a chokehold then uh, Mane would have gone and scored so I, I find it absolutely shocking that VAR didn't even look at it and uh, Michael Owens thinks that Mane should have gone down but Mane's instinct was to get to the ball first to try and score so that's why he didn't go down this is what Michael Owens said I'm astonished that Mane didn't shout and ask the referee why it's not a penalty and I'm surprised he didn't go down because he is quite clearly grabbed by both arms of Darlow the goalkeeper one certainly touches and the other grabs Mane's leg it's open to debate whether he would have tapped it in without getting grabbed there possibly not possibly yes but whatever the situation you can't grab someone's legs and he's quite clearly clearly grabbed his light, right leg there and prevents him from swinging it and scoring as a center forward what most players try to do is make it more obvious to the referee which is why we were surprised he didn't go down we should applaud honesty as well we see so many times this season players going down when there's hardly been any touch or no touch at all so I think we should applaud it but I'm sure Jurgen Klopp would be thinking tonight if he went down he can't come out and say it but I'm sure he's thinking if he went down he would have won a penalty there it just goes to show it's virtually impossible for a referee to give a penalty unless you go down I've said it once and I will say it again referees don't mind in fact they prefer if you go down and it gives them a decision to make and I find this argument absolutely ridiculous that you have to go down to get a penalty if Mane's leg is grabbed then it's a penalty regardless whether he goes down or not and I'm, I'm absolutely fuming with this because it cost frankly it cost Liverpool two points yes Liverpool were also themselves to blame for the draw we had chances to score to win the game we had chances especially Salah and Firmino either of them should have scored one of their chances but still the inconsistency with VAR is just so 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 annoying frustrating disappointing I could go on and on you get the drift let me know what you think about that money Darlow incident and Steve Nicol who is now working as a pundit for ESPN he is of course a Liverpool legend one winning like five league titles with Liverpool he says that Liverpool should be concerned by Manchester United's recent form and this is what he said you look at Liverpool's result and Man United's result the performance from one team that dominated the game should have won very very comfortably but yet end up with one point and then you've got a team in Man United coming up on the rails who pretty much didn't deserve anything there's no way they deserve to win this game against Wolves but they end up winning and getting three points so that has to be a concern 
for Liverpool. At the end of the day, Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp will be looking at themselves, try to not to look elsewhere and just get the job done. But you have to be concerned with Man United because regardless of how they play right now, they are getting victories. And yeah, that's the, that's the hallmark of champions. If Man United can keep grinding out results when they are not playing well, we have to take notice and we have to take Man United seriously. And as I said, I think Liverpool's next game against Southampton is must win. And after that, we must beat Manchester United. If we draw or lose to Man United at Anfield, they will get so much confidence from that, that that could propel them to go on a run and maybe even overtake, Man United, overtake Liverpool at the top of the Premier League table. And I would hate nothing more than to see Manchester United win a league title ahead of Liverpool this season. So we cannot, we cannot let that happen. Absolutely cannot let that happen. So I really hope that Jurgen Klopp works out what is wrong with this team right now because Liverpool are not firing on all cylinders. And I really hope we can get refreshed for the Southampton game. And Ronnie Rosenthal, another former Liverpool player, said uh, it was never expected this season that Liverpool was going to repeat last season and finish 20 points clear of anybody else. It's clear that they can't do it again, but they can still win the Premier League because on paper they have the strongest team, the squad, the quality of the players, they are complete, they have quality in every department. That is why they will continue to be the main contender. They are the favourites, but we have to show it on the pitch and we have to take our chances. We had chances against West Brom, against Newcastle to kill the game, to get the three points. Liverpool have to rediscover their ruthless edge if we want to win the title. And I have an interesting statistic for you guys. For the third year running, Liverpool have won the most points in the calendar year. So in 2018, we won 88 points. In 2019, we won 98 points, which is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. 98 points won in the calendar year. This year, however, I mean 2020, the year that has just finished, we won 77 points. And that's a little bit concerning that our form has been pretty inconsistent. But I, I really, really hope that Liverpool can turn it around in, in this new year. As I said, we have to beat Southampton and Man United in the next uh, two Premier League games. And between that, there is a game against Aston Villa, which I think you can probably rotate the side a little bit. But it's the FA Cup and I, I really want Liverpool to go far in the FA Cup as well. So I hope that we take that competition seriously. And Fabinho gave a brilliant interview to Liverpool FC his official website he said the manager has tried to help me with small things positional things sometimes when to play a long ball step forward with it things like this the small details so I can get better he doesn't talk too much about it he has just tried to give me the confidence to play the position of center back I always say the communication is very important with my partners when playing there the other center back the full backs the midfielders the boys have helped me a lot and now I'm used to playing in this position so I have more confidence to play there I just want to help the team to play good football and be as good as possible. And as I said, I know in this position I have to be more communicative with all the players because I can see almost everything on the pitch. I try to help the other players in their positions. It's more about communication, but I don't know if I really have to change a lot in terms of how I am on the pitch. It's more about leadership and communication. Brighton, the Brighton game was the first time I played there. As a kid, maybe a couple of times, but it was not my main position. Liverpool was the first time in my professional career. And oh my goodness, can you imagine like Fabinho hasn't played centre-back any time before in his professional career and he's playing there like he has played as a centre-back all his life. Absolutely brilliant player. The game intelligence, the physical attributes that he have has is just incredible. Before the games as well, I asked Joe Gomez some things about positioning and things like this. Fabinho continued. But now the Van Dijk and Gomez are injured. I just asked them how they are, how it's going and things like this. I don't really ask too much about the position. Not because I think I am already very good in the position, but it doesn't mean that. It's just normally, I just talk normally with the boys. Of course, defense is a new position for me, so I can improve a lot there. I am happy because I always try to give my best to the team. I always try to get better as well and it doesn't matter what position I play, whether it is midfield or centre-back, I can learn with my teammates. So I'm always going, trying to learn, improve and be a better player so I can help the team. I've always said I want it to be important for the team, so I'm happy to hear this. But I, I know I can improve more in this position and I will do my best to be better. 
And for me personally, Fabinho said, winning the Champions League and the Premier League, it was a really special feeling because in my career, I always want to progress. I wanted to progress. So a move from Monaco to Liverpool was something great for this moment in my career. So on a personal level, it was a good day for, for me. I've watched the Liverpool Real Madrid the Champions League final on TV and I was supporting Liverpool, but unfortunately they didn't win. That for me though was the beginning of a new history. I didn't see anyone when I came to Melwood, which might have been a good thing because maybe they would have been angry they had lost the final. But it was a good moment for the club to play a Champions League final after a long time. It was definitely a good day for me because I signed for this club. Last year when we flew back from Kiev after the game directly, there was a moment when we were all really sad, disappointed, frustrated. Jurgen Klopp said this a year on, but I was standing behind all the guys in the queue and going to the plane and I really thought, we have to come back, we have to go back and get this thing right and win the Champions League. And, and they did. They won the Champions League one year after that, which is a monumental achievement. And Fabinho said it shows the mentality of this group of players and the staff. It's not easy to play Champions League finals two years in a row. After losing one final, it could change some things inside the club. But with this team, I think it helped to make them even more hungry to win trophies, hungry to win this competition. One of the best competitions in the world. In my first season at Liverpool, playing in a Champions League final and winning it was really special. And I'm just delighted that we, that we managed to win it and especially after that the 99 point Premier League season is just out of this world. Liverpool need to get back on track against Southampton. If we win that we will be full of confidence going into the Man United game hopefully. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Many more videos to come throughout 2021. I'm really excited what this year brings for my channel. I will try to be more consistent with my uploads, more career mode videos coming your way. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you later guys. Goodbye.